That's everybody in church this evening. We're glad you're here. Let's all stand together. We'll sing a couple of songs. My dad can come to lead us. Charles is playing for us tonight. Sing out unto the Lord. Well, that first one here is Southern Very Sing Song, page 192. 192. Oh, you got it on yet. Yeah. You better use the hooks. We are going to see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. No more dying there.
more about the clinical or the additional mediation with the animal and, and the actual talking to the family. Um, so we, we need to kind of have, and also it's about making both diets, you know, the lean and the meat would be just a completely great relief from um, things we put in and that we still have cows and pigs and but things we put in and that kind of thing. So we do need to break it all down. All right. Yes. Doing all right. I talked to him this week. He's waiting on some test results. He feels like he has a blockage on the side of his uh, intestine there. So I don't know. He won't know until I think it's either today or tomorrow. He's supposed to go to the doctor. Um, and then let's see. He also has some problems with his uh, pacemaker. Paul had a pacemaker put in. Been probably 10 years ago now, and the wires broke in there, so they stick it, and there's nothing they can do. <clears throat> One of the doctors told him he'd be scared to even try to fix it because he, he may die on the table, and so Paul don't want to have anything done to it. So he's going to see another heart doctor to see what he says. So I hate to see Paul not have it. <clears throat> it's not even working, plus it's sticking him. Paul's been through it, I'll tell you that. Keep him in your prayers. When he comes, he comes outside, usually. He has the dogs with him, and he pulls in, and that way he can get in and get out. And not have to move around a whole lot, you know. I tried to even look through the book for Rita's got a spot of cancer on her tongue. Rita Wilson. She can't hardly eat the food. It's just like she sees. Also, uh, Kay, let's pray for Kay with her surgery coming up. Joe's having surgery coming up. Uh, need to Calvin keep Judy. Yeah, Lewis Calvin and Judy. Yeah. Lewis and Pauline Taylor. Keep them in prayer. Jerry and Mary Kirkman. And Carolyn Gurley, all of the <coughs> shut-ins, those you can't get out. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, she, she sent a text this morning. She had a migraine headache with some stomach problems. So she's real sick. Yeah, I heard that his mother had been in the hospital. I don't know if she's still there. Somebody else had a yes, Lou. Uh, the girl that sent me a thing this morning, it said she went to her doctor last week with her back nerve and everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, Lou also had weight loss surgery this year, probably 10 years ago. Um, her blood pressure was so high that they took her off of some of her medication. And um, she took herself off of her pain meds because she said they kept her out a lot from being her blood pressure. Probably need her prayers. Uh, I was only giving Polly a couple of days.
days, and that's been two or three days back. So we need to really pray for them. And then James is trying to find a doctor for the uh, Gloria with the kidney problem. So let's pray for them. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, Linda. Stay out well. Yep. She's in the hospital. She's K in our prayer. She's in the hospital. And um, they had to put her in some gloves. She said, no, you need to dehydrate or hold on. Okay. She was a little better today, but thank God it's still too hot. But Jamie, pray for Jamie Mitchell. She, um, she's going through some problems, too, with the law. testimony in itself, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It really is. Y'all said they had a real good service today. Glad he's back tonight. And uh, had good people down at Worthful Baptist Church right down the road. I believe that's about everybody. How about unspoken requests tonight? Unspoken? Anybody with unspoken? Okay, well let's go to the Lord in prayer and remember all these different ones. David, won't you lead us in prayer tonight as we start? special request uh, as far as activities. We've got one in the making coming up. Is that May the 9th, did you May say? The May the 6th. Yeah, May the 6th. Okay. Uh, Ham and Yam Festival down in Smithfield. Mm -hmm. It's a spring festival where we have like a lot of crafts, food, music. Um, Just go and have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Be a good relaxing day to kind of just kick back and enjoy a good fellowship with each other and enjoy the activities down there. Right. Uh, okay, so we'll find out a little more about that coming up here soon. I believe that's about all of them. Let's go ahead and ask our ushers if they'll come to the front. We'll receive our offering tonight. All right. Brother Randy, you lead us in. Lord God in heaven, I do thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be a house of worship and prayer. Thank you, Lord, for 
all those, Lord, that are still caring for us, Lord, and how we are caring for them. Amen. Lord, shut-ins, those that are sick and ailing, those that are putting up with death in the family, Lord God, I pray that there might be a time of special need for these people to help us, Lord, to reach out. Lord, I pray that you just encourage and strengthen them, Lord. Bring them back home here, Lord. And come under the sound Amen. preaching of the Word of God, Lord. I pray and know that's going to help. That's going to encourage and strengthen anybody. I pray, Lord God, that even tonight, Father, that you might give Pastor the power to go forward. Yes. The Spirit, I pray, Lord, that you might bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Side of a Christian that just says you gotta go and you gotta go. I'm glad that that fire is still burning, and I'm glad that that's the only fire I'll ever feel. Well, there is a place somewhere below that I've heard a great about. They say that people, when they go, can never come back. Turn the road away, and they 
see the fire, it burns all night because there is no day. But I've escaped that awful place when Jesus saved my soul. Yes. And not one hair on my head will be into that place. To Since the Savior took my part, the only fire I'll ever feel is burning in my heart. Yeah. Eternal life is given me when I was born again, and the Lord applied His grace. chapter 11, 1 through 16, order in the worship service. And the big point of the message is that we need to keep services in order. God is not the God of confusion, and uh, he likes order. He likes to have order, and he, he likes to be able to move when his spirit moves. And uh, So order in the worship service here. And uh, I uh, heard about some people in the hospital, and they were gathered together in the waiting room where the family member lay gravely ill. Finally, the doctor came in, looked tired, looked sober. He said, I'm afraid I'm the bearer of bad news. He said, as we surveyed the situation, it's bad. And boy, everybody's face kind of dropped, and they were all worried to death. And he said, the only hope left for your loved one at this time is a brain transplant. And it's an experimental a procedure, quite risky, and you'll have to pay for the brain yourself. Well, the family members <coughs> just sat in silence. They were shocked. They never dreamed this. At length, somebody finally says, well, how much does a brain cost? And the doctor quickly responded and said, well, a female brain goes for 20000 a male brain goes for 50000 Well, the moment torn kind of awkward, the men in the room tried not to smile, avoiding eye contact with the women, but some actually smirked. One girl, unable to control her curiosity, she blurted out the question everybody wanted to ask, well, why does the male brain cost so much more? The doctor smiled at her childish innocence. Then he had the entire group and he said, well, it's standard procedure when we price the brains, we mark the female brains down because they've been used. 
<laughs> you ladies like that one up. The females have used their brains. Okay, well, hopefully the males have too. Let's pick it up here in chapter 11. We see here in verses 1 down through our verse 16, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances I de as I delivered them to you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. <coughs> but every woman that prayeth and prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But it is a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, lest her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is in the image of the glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. And for this cause ought the women to have power on their own heads because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man. He's saying they're both equal, but they came in a certain order. Man came first, then think about it like this. Man came first, and then from man came a woman. Now from women come men. We're born of our mothers. And so he's not putting anyone down. He is just calling attention to, to order. And uh, he says for in verse 12, For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things are of God. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, let the churches of God, or neither the churches of God. So let's go to the Lord as we look at the order in the worship service this evening. Father, we come today and just pray that you'll take the message and apply it into our hearts. Thank you for these who come out on Sunday night. As we look at this passage, teach us things that we may have never considered. Lord, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. Thank you, Lord, that you love us all just the same, male or female. Uh, it doesn't matter. Young or old, it doesn't matter. Why? Because you love us all. And so I know you have a purpose for all of us tonight. So we pray that God, that purpose will be made plain for us, and we'll follow your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Paul's dealing with the problems in the church of Corinth, and boy, they have a ton <coughs> of them, and he's taking them all one by one. They've asked him these questions, and he's writing down the answers, and he goes to the next question, and he writes down the answers. And so he's beginning to deal now with the worship service, and he starts to distinguish the roles of God the Father, God the Son, the Husband, and the Wife. And he's not exalting the Father at the expense of the Son. They're both equal. Nor is he exalting the Husband at the expense of the Wife. For they, in God's sight, are both equal. They're all important to God, and he loves you regardless of whether you're married, single, male, female. You're special to God tonight. And so as we look at this passage, number one we see here, Paul is saying, be ye followers of me as I am of Christ in verse number one. Now he's saying he wanted the Corinthians to do the very thing that they had observed him doing. When they saw him witness, when they saw him telling others about Jesus, he said, learn to do that. When they saw him read the scriptures, he is telling them, learn to read your scripture." When they saw him pray and get a hold of God, he is saying to them, learn from what I do and pray, read the scriptures, witness, stay faithful to God, live a holy life. He wanted them to do the very same things he was doing. This is called discipleship. 
you take somebody under your wing, you teach them the, the truths of the Word of God, and you try to help them to become stronger in their faith in the Lord. Now, this is discipleship. As Paul followed Jesus, they followed Paul. Now, why did Paul say, follow me? Follow my example? Well, you've got to think about it a moment. He wasn't being arrogant. He didn't think of himself as being sinless. At this time, however, the Corinthian believers did not have much of, about the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ. I mean, the Gospels hadn't been written yet. The New Testament wasn't completed yet. So Paul could not really tell them to imitate Jesus Christ because the Gospels were not in written form. And uh, so they did not know what Jesus was like except for what they heard. And the best way to point this out to new Christians, point them to Christ and point them to a Christian who they can trust is following Christ. That's discipleship. Paul had been in Corinth about two years and he built a relationship with these believers and he tells them, now you want to grow in the Lord? Follow me as I follow Christ. He met him on the road to Damascus. He never forgot. It. So, verse number two. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them unto you. Now in this passage, the ordinances means the scriptures. The Old <coughs> Testament scriptures. He says here, follow me in what I do and follow the Old Testament scriptures and what they teach. Paul gives them a praise. As they have remembered him, they have supported him. And also the ordinances of the church was the word of God. Now we keep two ordinances in the Baptist church, and that's baptism and the Lord's Supper. Uh, we don't participate in baptism and the Lord's Supper to get saved. What that is is showing other people that we have been saved by the grace of God. Once saved, always saved. Amen. We're telling the world... I'm dying in Jesus Christ. I'm rising to walk a new life in Jesus Christ. And woo, thank God, yeah. I'm a changed individual, as we said this morning. That's what baptism is all about. Same thing with the Lord's Supper. When we drink the juice, what are we remembering? We're remembering the blood of Jesus. We eat the little wafer, we're remembering the body of Jesus that was beaten, that was torn, that was lacerated with that whip. Yeah. And so... The world looks at us and they wonder, how can that Christian keep a smile on their face through all that they're going through? There's only one way, and that's through the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul gives them commendation for thinking of him and all the chaos, and he would try to help them get this straightened out. They supported him, and they were listening to him, and they're writing him these questions. They write in one about the worship service because they have a mixture. You have to remember in their day, they had a big temple that had temple prostitutes and the women in the temple would shave their heads showing that they were prostitutes. And Paul said, hey, let your hair grow. That's a glory to God. And then the men, he says, the exact opposite, keep your hair short because even nature itself teaches that's the way God has ordained it to be. So we see here in this passage, in this section, his main concern is reverence and avoiding irreverence in the worship service. Read it in that context. In the matter of wearing hats, and you don't have to wear a hat if you come to church, but he is saying, keep your head covered. He is saying for the men, keep your hair covered. What's he teaching that for? He's teaching that because he's wanting us to stay in order. He's wanting to have a, an order of authority. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The man is held responsible for the home, and then the mother is the heart of the home, and then the children come underneath the mother and the father. So they all come together in one way or another. So it was a big problem in the first century here, Two cultural backgrounds colliding in this church. The Jewish women always covered their heads in worship. For a woman to uncover her head in public was a sign that she possibly was a prostitute. And on the other hand, Greek women may have been used to uh, worship.
worshiping without head coverings. And so he says, now when you come together, stay together. Everybody work together. Put your authority under the authority of God. And in this letter, Paul has already talked about division and disorder in the church. They were involved in this issue. If you remember, some of them were bragging about who baptized them. One of them said, well, Apollos baptized me. Somebody else said, well, Peter baptized me. Somebody else said, well, Jesus baptized me. I'm better than you are. And Paul says, listen, don't be that way. We are a team. We are a body. He is the head. We are the body. We work together in love and unison. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. And so his solution comes from his desire for unity among the church members and it be appropriate in the worship service. He wanted the Jews and the Gentiles and everybody there to be in harmony, to be in unity in their dress and in their worship. And so he accepted God's sovereignty in creating rules for relationships. He even said that the man that loses his wife, he's free to remarry if he wants to. If he doesn't, that's fine too. Same way with a wife that loses a husband. She is free to remarry or she is free to remain single. Paul himself said, I wish they would remain single so they can do more for the Lord like I do. But if they, if they have to have a, a mate, a husband or a wife, let them take a husband or a wife. There's not a thing in the world wrong with that, he said. But then in verse number three, that I would... Have you know that the head of every man is Christ? And the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Now this is just an order of spiritual authority. Christ is the head of the man, the man the head of the woman. That means God holds the man responsible for the spiritual decisions made in the home, and the wife and the husbands work together, and God is the father, uh, the head of Christ, and that's why Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Thy will be done. Why is that? Because Jesus voluntarily put himself under the submission and authority of God the Father. And someone has said that man, if he loved his wife like Christ loved the church, there would be no problem in the wife loving him like we love Christ. So it works both ways. The man may be the head of the home, but the wife is the heart of the home. She sets the atmosphere for the family. Then in verse number four, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Now the man that comes in with a hat on his head, he said, and preaches and teaches, then he should take it off and honor God and not wear that because that's irreverent in the house of God in worship. It, the word dishonor there means to shame down. Uh, it means to confound. It means to shame or blush. We could say that it's a dishonor to replace Christ as the head of the man with a hat. He said the hat is not the head of the man. Christ is the head of the man. But then in verse number five, every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head for that is even all one as if she were shaven. So if a woman is praying or teaching, she was to cover her head with her hair, her beautiful hair, and not a hat. Uh, and she, could, she could use a hat if she needed to, but she was not to cut her hair all the way down and bald-headed and more or less. That's exactly opposite to what God says do. God made the women to have beautiful hair, and it's a shame for her to shave that hair off. And God made men to have short hair. And even medical reasons tell you that. Paul is establishing a chain of responsibility. That is God the Father, God the Son, the husband, the wife, the children. That's the way that he has put it up. Uh, signed it all up together. Now verse number 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Now he's saying that she might as well just cut it all off if she doesn't cover her head. Why? Because it's a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, so let her be covered. 
As I said, in that day, a prostitute would have a shaved head. A Christian woman would reject that teaching by wearing a hat or either wearing her beautiful hair as she felt led of God. Now, verse number 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is in the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. And the woman is to make sure her head is covered in the worship service with her hair or the hat. The man is not to cover his head, for Christ is the head of the church, and we are in the body of Christ, and he is our head. Now verse number 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman came from the man. I heard a story one time. Adam and Eve were sleeping. And, I, and Eve woke Adam up. She was poking at him. And he had been out kind of late working. And he said, what in the world are you doing? She said, I'm counting your ribs. You've been late a couple of nights. <laughs> I've been counting your ribs. There's something going on here. Well, anyway, God created Adam. He took from his wounded side a rib. He fashioned it into a beautiful woman. He brought her to the Adam as the first wife. She became his prized possession, and the man needs the woman just like the woman needs the man, and she became his helpmate to help him in life. That's why it says in verse number 10, For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. See, there's angels all around us all the time, and they're watching to make sure that we follow the order that God gives us about worshiping the Lord they're learning about the grace of God. Somebody said an angel can't sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me because they've never even been saved. They were created that way, but they like to hear about salvation. And they like to move in the worship service and hear the, hey, woo, thank God he washed me, he cleansed me, he saved me. And now my name is written in the Lamb's book of life and I'm on my way to heaven, amen. Yes. So there's angels all around us. That's why it says because of the angels. The insubordination of an uncovered woman signified her refusal to recognize the authority of the husband. That may offend the angel who observed the contact of the believers in the church gatherings. But then in verse 11, nevertheless, Neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. What does that verse show? I'll tell you what it shows. Equality. There's equality in the man and the woman. God takes great pride, uh, takes great pride in what he does between a wife and a husband. They are created for each other. They work with each other. Neither the man is better, neither the woman is better. So you don't look down upon either one. You don't degrade your wife or your husband. You don't look at your mate and say, I'm better than you are. Oh, no, we all have a, a, a place of service in the kingdom of God. Verse number 12. For as the woman is of the man, even so the man also by the woman, and by all things of God. Now, the woman came from man to start with, now, thank God, the man comes from the woman every time she gives birth. That's right. He's born of a woman. That's why I say this is God's pattern. Man should never abuse the gift of a wife, neither should a woman abuse the gift of a husband. God created them both to work together, and I would even say submit ourselves one to another. Listen to this verse, Ephesians 5, verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now God will hold both the husband and the wife responsible on how they get along with each other, but the man is the ultimate authority in the family that God will judge and hold accountable. That's why the man is created first. Men and women are interdependent. Women are not inferior to men since they give birth to men, and men are not inferior to women because women came from men. All believers, male and female, are equal in the sight of the Lord, complementary in the Lord's work. Their roles are different in function and relationship. Not in spirituality or importance. They're both important. The wife is important. The husband's important. The children's important. 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are all important. Amen. Yes. So he's saying there, when you come together and worship, come together in harmony and unity. Looking after your weaker brethren. Kind of like the, the situation when he was talking about the idle meat. Hey, if you go to the butcher shop and you see some idle meat and it's one-tenth of the price of the regular beef, you're going to be tempted to buy it. But if somebody walks up to you who's been saved out of idolatry, they think there's demons in that idle meat, then you would probably say, I don't believe I want to buy it. Because I don't want to offend this younger believer in the Lord. There's nothing wrong with the meat, but it's a, called a stumbling block instead of a stepping stone. And so that's why he's telling us, keep order in the services. Judge, in verse 13, in yourselves. It is comely that a woman pray. Uh, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? The woman is to follow the chain of command, just like the husband is to follow the chain of command. Verse number 14. Doth not even nature itself teach it that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? I mean, the woman is to cover her head with her glorious hair. That's a possession God gives her. Yet the man is to cut his hair, showing that he is subjective to the will of God for his life. Nature itself teaches this. There's a sense of that which is normal and that which is right. The male hormone, testosterone, speeds up the loss of hair. And the women's hormone, estrogen, seems to help hair grow longer and for longer periods of time. And so even nature, physiology, and the physical makeup of a man and a woman shows this is the proper order for worship service. God has given a woman hair as a covering to show her tenderness, her softness, and her beauty. Now verse number 15, that if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. The woman has a prized possession in that, in that hair. The word for glory carries the idea of dignity, honor, praise, and worship. And so the woman's hair shows dignity, honor, praise to God. But in verse number 16, and we'll finish it up. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. God warns the man not to be rebellious in this chain of order or he'll be held accountable and God will hold him responsible. So this section focuses primarily on the proper attitudes and conduct of worship, not on the marriage relationship or the role of the women in the church. Paul is specifically giving instructions in a cultural setting telling everyone to come together and promote church unity and promote church harmony. And so he told the women to make sure that you're covered. He told the men to make sure the hair is cut. And thank God he has a reason for that. And that reason is that when a, a lost person comes into the worship service, they say there's something different about these people. They love each other. They love the Lord. And thank God the Lord loves us. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight. The order service in the worship service, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the man, the woman, the children. Maybe you're here tonight and you'd say, Preacher, I need the Lord's strength. I need His help. I've got a burden on my heart. God knows all about it. Just be my prayer partner and pray with me. I'll be glad to. Anyone like that, you'd slip a hand up all around this congregation. Father, you've seen our hands, you know our hearts. We don't want to offend anyone. We want to bring them to Jesus as a stepping stone, not a stumbling block. Thank you for our church, our godly women, our godly men and Grace Baptist who are here tonight. Lord, coming out on a Sunday night to worship you. And I pray, give them a special blessing, answer their request, whatever it might be. We'll thank you, we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand our feet while heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one looking around. If you want to come around the altar and pray, you feel free to come. God just says, stay in unity, stay in harmony. Don't let anyone come in and destroy that wonderful love between each other. 
that will cause a lot of damage. Even the angels look in upon the worship service. Why? They're observing the grace of God. They're observing the salvation of the Lord. They're there looking after us. They are servants of the Lord coming in to see the people of God. Let's let them know our heart is in the heart of God. Our heart is to serve our wonderful Savior. Thank God for that. Savior, let's give him another big amen, right? Amen. amen. Thank God for that. Well, I hope you have a great week. Brother Jackie, would you dismiss us in prayer? After he does, tell somebody you love them, shake their hand. Good to see everybody. Brother yes. Jackie. I follow what y'all have been having. I'm very interested. We're doing a bunch of loving us and I want to know what we do. I have done that with this week. I can't wait to be down in that this with a hit there out that you take care of. Let's reach it every one of the children tonight, Lord, that we got that we all got burned and depressed and loved ones that's lost, Lord. Let's touch them and give them the dear be saved with hope everlasting too late and we don't have very much time to go yet, Lord. I'm waiting for it, Lord. I had enough of this one and two this whole world that this we don't know what we're going to do and just like we're everywhere we turn we run into something, Lord, and we Wait, we want to go home, Lord. We want to thank you for it. Watch over, guide, and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.